let's first look what what is actually written about dignity in the Universal Declaration. We are celebrating the Universal Declaration, so let's have a quick look. First, we see it in the preamble that, and by the way, the, the overhead slides will be sent. If you are interested, it will be sent to order juris. So uh, feel free so you don't have to write all those things down. It's too quick anyways to write them down. But if we look first, if we look to the preamble, it says, the first sentence actually almost is like, whereas recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable right of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. So dignity is the basis for freedom, justice, and peace of the world. Then it says, whereas the peoples of the United Nations have in the charter reaffirmed their faith in fundamental human rights in the dignity and worth of the human person and in the equal rights of men and women, women and have determined to promote social progress and better standards of life in larger freedom. Then Article 1, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. The first article, Article 22, everyone as a member of the society has the right to social security and is entitled to realization through national effort and international cooperation in accordance with the organization and resource of its state of the social and of the economic, social and cultural rights indispensable for his dignity and the free development of his personality. And then last but not least in Article 23.3, everyone who works has the right to just and favorable re remuneration, ensuring for himself and his family an existence worthy of human dignity and supplemented, if necessary, by other means of social protection. But what is dignity? It is nice to mention here, like dignity is the basis of all our rights. But what is dignity? Actually, last week there was a meeting in the European Parliament organized by the ADF, ADF International and Euroactive, and I asked the question, I said, okay, but what is the definition of human dignity? How did people see human dignity? And then the answer was, well, there is not really a definition, and there should also not be a definition. That was a kind of an answer of one of the panel members. But I'm not really thinking if this is really good, because nowadays you see that dignity is used everywhere in all the debates. People are talking about the dignity to die in order to justify euthanasia. They're even talking about the uh, dignity of women to choose or not a baby, so in order to justify abortion, which is actually, in essence, against human dignity. So I think that it is necessary, in my point of view, to investigate what is dignity. So with some people together, we are trying to investigate the concept of dignity in Rome also, in order to find out what is meant by dignity. What do we mean actually of dignity? Then let's go and follow the psalm, psalmist David, when he writes in Psalm 8. What is man that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. So what is human dignity? Well, as Christians, we believe that all people are created in the image and likeness of God. Actually, when God created the human being, he made a kind of a poem. He was so happy that he created them. It's like a poem written, like it's written in Genesis 1, verse 27, the first ever chapter. It says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So imagine it's like a song, it's like, it's like a, a, a happiness. And it says the basis of human dignity, in his image we are created, but also male and female he created them. So we are equal as human beings, but we are not uniform as male and female. But we are one as human being, as it's written in Galatians 3 verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor, Jew, uh, nor free, nor is male, female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ. So human dignity says that we are all created in the image and likeness of God. That will not say that we are uniformed, are different classes, different situation, male, female, but we are all one in Jesus Christ. 
So as ECPM, we believe that also, which is the basis values that we are standing for, is that we are created in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, life is holy and should be protected from conception to natural death. So um, Benjamin Hanwell will talk more about this. Um, in 2009, Professor Dr. Hans Gerd Pöttering, member of the European Parliament and the president of the European Parliament, uh, started the Working Group for Human Dignity in the European Parliament. The aim was to put human dignity on the forefront of the EU policy making again. At this moment, I am the Secretary General of this Working Group, and it's happy to see that we have, this is actually the, the launch of the, after the election of 2014, and it is based on the Universal Declaration of Human Dignity, that also this year is the 10th anniversary, but I will leave that up to Benjamin Hanwell to talk more about this. But the interesting thing is that we have seven members of the European Parliament from seven different political groups as co-chairs in this working group, both socialist, liberal, uh, popular party, conservatives, the direct democracy, the non inscri So there, it is important to see that human dignity the fact that we are created in the image and likeness of God should be supported if you are left, if you are right. And it is a kind of a statement. So every time when we organize a conference on palliative care or other topics, we can put all the logos of all the groups there together to show that human dignity is, um, is a universal value that should be shared by all. Well, what is dignity then? I was trying to find out, but dignus is, is Latin for worthy of esteem and honor. Due to a certain respect or weighty importance. I mean, if we go very back, both Aristotle and Plato said that most humans are by nature suitable only to be slaves. Most of them are not worthy of freedom. Therefore, the term dignity was not used for all human beings, but for just a few. Then, if we go to the Middle Ages, on the medieval times, we see that dignity was embedded in the social position of the person. His dignity was directly in line with his relations to other people, the honor of a dignity of a knight, for example, towards his king or towards his relatives. It's another standard, another responsibility that it is. However, it becomes that... that uh, that if the, the, when the society started to fail, develop new, um, new ways of dignity, of using the word dignity was used. And one was in the time of the enlightenment. It was already mentioned, the time of reason, the time of free will. And uh, actually, Immanuel Kant uh, wrote that actually he saw dignity or humanity not as a means, but as a final goal. So he said, act so that you treat humanity, whether in your own person or in that of another, always as an end and never as a means only. This is contrast, it's based on the free will. But this is in the contrast as what we believe as a Christian, to love God and love the other. So freedom and dignity as a responsibility. So, and if you see dignity as, a, as an end goal and not as merely as a means, you saw also in the history that many people were killed and died, actually, by getting this kind of paradigm of uh, final of human dignity. If we go to the Catholic thinking, uh, social thinking and human dignity, we go to the 18th and the 19th century, where political changes and industrialization brought many changes. There was a rapid urban growth, joblessness, and the destructions of the workers' and traditional organizations, such as guilds in the name of free competition. This provided semblance of continuity and sense of security in the economic realm, but also caused family breakdowns, poverty, and other social problems. New solution has to be found to secure the dignity of men that became more and more an empty word. 
Pope Leo XIII was addressing the large social questions with a letter to the whole world in 1891, the Rerum Novarum, the Catholic vision of the reconstruction of the social order. It became known as the Catholic Middle Way. He took St. Thomas Aquinas as example to make a synthesis of faith and reason, grace and nature, Christianity and humanism. He established the idea that the church has a social doctrine. This flows from the fact that man is made in the image and likeness of his creator, Imago Dei. He also argued that individuals should have a positive attitude to change institutions in an effort to uphold the dignity of man and that the theological ethic adequate to the new things of modern political and economic life should be developed. The Pope took the middle way between socialism and liberalism. He criticized the socialists, saying that the man by nature has the right to possess property, the liberty to have an increasing stock and save money for better conditions of life. Furthermore, he criticized the socialism for seeing everything as equal in the framework of uniformity. It was harming the creativity of the human mind. Finally, he was afraid that when the parent is set aside and substituted by the government, the state will exercise control over the family. Against the liberals, he defends the dignity, the rights of every person, the obligations concerning his or her life and the roles in the society. He also supports the view that workers should not be seen as capital. The human dignity as being created in the image and likeness of God should have priority and should be embedded in certain rights. He especially underlined the need to protect family from the cruelty of men of greed. If we look to the Protestant point, you can look to Abraham Kuyper. Abraham Kuyper was a Dutch theologian and politician and also witnessed the challenges of the Industrial Revolution by the late 1880s. He organized the first Christian Social Congress in the Netherlands. There he delivered a memorable speech called The Social Problem and the Christian Religions. This was only months after Leo, Pope Leo XIII has, had promulgated Rerum Novarum. He said, religion is not one thing among many that autonomous people choose to do, but that it is rather the direction that human life take as people give themselves over to the gripping power of either the true God. So he focused on dignity and as responsibility. We have a responsibility as a creature created by God to use our gifts and talents in the society. And he went even further because he said that the Christian religion seek the human dignity of each individual in the social relationship of a society. While the liberals believe in a society based on individuals, the socialists believe in a society based on a social system. He believed, and that became the basic also of the Christian democratic thinking, society based on communities, based on groups. So he developed what he called the spheres of autonomy, uh, sovereignty, sorry. So he said that the society is built up out of groups like media, like business, like church. The core is family. And they should interact it with each other, but they should not control one the other. So the press should not, media should not control the government. The government should not control uh, the media or the business and so on. But they are, inter, uh, they are interrelated to each other, and, uh, but they are autonomous to each other. So the basis as human dignity, as a basis of community in relations. And I think this is also the basis as what we think that we are created in the image and likeness of God, man and woman. We are created not to be alone, but to live in communities. That's why we always have to support communities and giving the autonomy to our communities in order to develop themselves and not to be controlled. And especially if we think about family as the basic community in our society. Also, if we look to the start of the European Union, the European project, if we look at after the Second World War, so around the same time that this declaration has started, you see that there are 
three founding fathers of the European Union, uh, Alcide de Gasperi, Konrad Adenauer, and Robert Schumann, that they went in a prayer retreat together. And Robert Schumann also had the Imago Dei as a basis. He went even further. He warned Europe. He said that, um, Schumann warned that when we are cut off from our Christian roots, this could lead to tyranny or anarchy. He saw the basis as Imago Dei, as the basis of the European values. So the European values, as people are talking about, like equality, tolerance, are coming from the Imago Dei. So we are created in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, we are equal and we need to respect each other and so on. However, so also after the Second World War, and I believe that in the time that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights also had been drafted, Europe was in ruins. There was a mass killing of Jews and other people, and this should never happen again. So I believe that human dignity was called also as a responsibility. We have to protect the weak, we have to protect the fragile. So that was the basis. As we believe that we have a freedom to love and God and to love the other, we have a responsibility to respect the human dignity. However, the society has changed and we faced in the West the sexual revolution, the cultural revolution, and instead of loving God and loving the neighbor, and instead of freedom to love God and love the others, it became a freedom from everything that could limit your individual autonomy. So the new focus on human rights, but focusing as what the previous speaker also said, on autonomy. And then you see that the words are the same, but the contents are different. Discrimination is used, not that I have another worldview as you, but I treat you the same. But discrimination nowadays is used as if you are not agreeing with same-sex marriages, if you are not agreeing with uh, with all things, what an author says. Equality, as we say, we are equal as human beings, but now you see that the LGBT are striving for equality, but actually is striving for preferential rights as others, because normally this universal declaration of human rights should be enough to protect our individual rights. So you see that, and in the Netherlands, for example, they are talking now about, and then they are creating new rights. So for example, in the Netherlands, uh, I'm coming from the Netherlands, and they legalized first euthanasia for terminal ill people. Then they, uh, they were legalizing euthanasia for people with psychological unbearable suffering. Then they created the possibility for mobile euthanasia clinics, which uh, delete the patient-doctor relationship and then they are discussing about legalizing for people who are dement. So before um, people could make a will to say like, if I'm dement, uh, then I would like to be uh, a Finnish. But how do you know? Because the people don't know how they feel when in the cases when they are dement. And now there was even a proposal for law that says that seven, if people above the 70 years old feel that their life is completed, then there should be a possibility to help them with um, assisted suicide. Well, if you look about human dignity, I saw yesterday actually a movie from Denmark, and it was a very interesting movie. It was about an old man, his wife died, and he wanted to commit all kinds of suicide because he felt that his life was kind of completed. However, all the people around him, he tried a few times, did not succeed, he did not find, but the people around him he, they helped him so much, and he found a kind of a new way in life. And actually, it is like the struggle, and at the end, you know, the whole village is with him, and so on. And it shows that this discussion is unreal. We should not ask people to kill themselves, but we should help them. That's why in the Netherlands, the party of the Christian Union had a manifesto, and I would like to propose this to any country. It's called Growing Older with Dignity. 
And that is focused on how can we help the older people. It's a manifesto, and all the parties signed it. So, and we should focus on an other way. We should claim back what is dignity. We should really hear what is dignity. And dignity is not, does not mean that the autonomy choice is the best way. You cannot talk about dignity if a woman says that I want to have dignity to abort my child. That is not dignity. Dignity is the protection of life, and that's the protection of the unborn. And then you see that new rights are created, like in the Netherlands they talk about the right to die, and then they are talking about the dignity to die. So actually that dignity should be the basis of human rights. You see that first dignity becomes like kind of equal with human rights, and then the second step is that human dignity is under human rights. So you change, you put new rights, and then you change actually the notion of dignity. So I believe that it is necessary and important that we are all discussing together what means dignity and to focus. Dignity without a standard you cannot call dignity. Morality means choice. Choice means a priority. Priority means a hierarchy of choices. A hierarchy of choices means something on the top, a standard. If you don't have a standard, how can you have a hierarchy of choices? If you cannot have a hierarchy of choices, how can you be moral? How can you choose? And if you cannot choose, how can you be moral? So I believe that we are in a moral crisis and we need to turn back and to define what is human dignity. Also, languages are used and authority are used. They are not talking about family. They are talking about couples or individuals and so on. So we have to be going back. I, we have not only to look to the dignity, but to read what is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and to use that as basis for our discourses. The title of my presentation was Challenges and opportunities. I believe there are a lot of challenges, as we said, but it's not too late. We still can claim what is dignity. In certain debates, if we talk in the Council of Europe about surrogacy, palliative care, you see there is still a basis of human dignity that the individual autonomy is not taking it all, all over. But we have worked together and we have to promote this and then I believe that we might have also a good opportunity to use universal declaration of human rights, human dignity, also in the political realm. And that brings us actually to the next topic because that is human dignity and the universal declaration of human dignity, which was actually based on this. So <laughs> thank you very much.